Rashad Bateman and Lamar Jackson's connection has been one of the key storylines of Baltimore Ravens training camp, but there were even more updates on it on Monday. We talk about that, the Ravens stiffing around some offensive line help and so much more coming up next year on this episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens. We are your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast, and I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire, here with you on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Thank you so much for being here today, making Locked On Ravens a part of your day and your first listen each and every day. We're free and available for you on all podcasting platforms. So, if you listen in audio form, we have you wherever you get your shows Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the whole nine yards, or in video form on YouTube. We have you covered there as well for five days a week of Ravens coverage. Today's episode of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. We are back here on a Tuesday edition of the show, and here with me is a first-time guest on the show. Very excited to have her on to talk some Ravens football. Valerie Preactor of WBAL. And Valerie, I know that I've said this really since training camp started. It was a long off season. I'm so glad that football is back. We now have stuff to go off of because these guys are working hard out there already. Yeah, and it's been super hot. So they are really getting their money's worth out there, like sweating. They're probably losing a ton of weight every day. So, I mean, they are out there killing it. I We're just standing out there and I'm getting just beat down by the sun. So I give them a lot of credit. And I know that this time is really hard, but they're making those connections that we're seeing every single day. And this is the time that fans, the hype starts to build. So everybody loves training camp because it's warm weather. We're not into the cold winter months yet, yeah. but this is just getting us a little more excited every single day. Yeah, I tell you, I, I, even I just step outside and you're just you just hit with that with that heat wave. So I'm telling you, imagine these guys going out there just practicing in that sweltering heat. It, it is yeah. a lot, but they are they're going through it. I know it can be tough, but I know that one of the big things you mentioned connection, Valerie, it is Rashad Bateman and Lamar Jackson. Bateman's been the huge storyline at camp, just about can he stay on the field? Can you establish some level of a connection with Lamar? And I think over these past couple of days of practice gotten great reports and great news out of that Bateman catching 20 plus yard balls, 30 plus yard balls, made a couple spectacular plays on Monday. I mean, to me, this is one of the key things for Baltimore, a healthy and a productive Rashad Bateman opens up this entire offense. So for you, how key is it that he's one getting this time on the field and how important is it for him to stay healthy for the majority, if not all the season? It's so crucial because you talk about the loss of OBJ and the connection that he had with Lamar Jackson, but now the Rashad Bateman experience has been talked about for so long now. And I feel like it was the end of last season or even during the off season, we were hearing rumblings from coach Harbaugh, a couple of the offensive coordinators and coaches and even other teammates like Lamar saying that, Oh, Rashad Bateman is locked in like this is going to be yeah. his year. So that puts that little worm in our ear to be like, OK, we are on Rashad Bateman clock right now. We got to watch him right. because, again, you throw Zay Flowers into the mix and you're getting a lot more cooks in the kitchen, which is always good for Lamar to have a variety of weapons. But Rashad Bateman has also been there the longest. So for them to continue to build that com uh, the connection, the chemistry, I mean, it really is crucial. and. The health that you're talking about with Rashad Bateman, that's always been kind of in the back of our minds as a potential issue, but you never know. I mean, you talk about the entire health of the of the entire team. I mean, it's it's always under question, and that's the biggest thing when you go into an NFL season hoping for. It's that Lamar Jackson stays healthy, all of the weapons stay healthy, and the offensive line too, because that's a big deal. It is, and I know that during Monday's practice, Bateman was again one of the absolute stars of it. Multiple connections with Lamar Jackson. The big one being, by all accounts, has leaped up over two defenders, brought down a pass in the end zone for a touchdown, but there was an update on that because he did end up going to the ground, staying down for a while, and ended up getting up holding the, the rib midsection area. Now, there were only about 10 minutes left in practice anyway, I believe is what the, the people out there were saying. But again, he didn't end up finishing the practice. So John Harbaugh had no updates on Rashad Bateman. So at the time of this recording, Valerie, we don't, we don't know what's going on there. 
Obviously, I think at this time in the offseason, and John Harbaugh talked about it with Tyler Linderbaum, they just want to be cautious with these, these guys. It wouldn't mm-hmm. be shocked to see Rashad Bateman miss some practice because – at this point in the offseason, Valerie, it's, just, it's not worth pushing a guy who's injured and then having something get worse. To me, I think that for Bateman, you want to make sure he gets through the season healthy. We're, yes. we're not to the season yet, so even though it's not ideal, it is okay if he has to miss some time. But again, you would hope he can stay on the field as much as possible during training camp. Absolutely. And you're right there, Kevin, because now is the time to miss. Obviously, we want to see them build that connection that we keep saying, but it's not as serious as missing games. So now we have a little bit over a month. Right now we're a month out from the season opener on September 5th in Kansas City. That is so huge. And if he could take maybe two, three weeks off, make sure that he's all rested, whatever's going on with the midsection injury uh, for Rashad Bateman, that that's healed by then. Also Tyler Linderbaum as well. This also gives an opportunity for us to see other faces and say, okay, maybe we can throw, you know, Devontae Walker back into the fold when, when he's good and say, all right, let's see what's happening there with him and Lamar or the other quarterbacks as well, because you need to have that backup mentality always, especially with this team, as we said, with injuries. Uh, But yeah, right now I'm not so worried about it. I don't think anybody really is because this is the time for this stuff to happen. And we are a little gun shy about preseason injuries like we saw years ago that that can just ravage an entire team so early on and they don't want to do that. Yeah. And I think ever since that point, the 2021 season where it was JK Dobbins in the preseason, Gus Edwards and Marcus Peters, just a couple days later, Baltimore. And we know this has gone through an entire deep dive on their training regimens, their training practices, what they do. And so that's why we're seeing a lot of caution, which, in my opinion, is the right decision Mm -hmm. in those areas. But I think for Bateman, again, we we just don't know a lot. So maybe he could be back practicing tomorrow if it's nothing. Maybe he does miss a little bit of time. We will see what the updates are as the days and the the hours go on here. But Valerie, I also think for Bateman in particular, and I've kind of been echoing this for the last couple of months, it's really important for Baltimore, I think, to find a little more balance this season on offense. This is a run first team, right? I'm not saying they have to change their entire identity because we saw what happened in the AFC championship game when they did that. And it was not a a good result, but the Ravens were 30th in pass attempts last season. They were first in rushing attempts. They should be a team that is anywhere from one to five in rushing attempts because that is what they do. But for a player like Rashad Bateman, it can sometimes be hard to get into a specific rhythm when you're only getting, let's say two to four targets a game Mm -hmm. where in this offense, Over the years in the Lamar Jackson era, if your name has not been Marquise Brown, if it's not been Mark Andrews, if it's not been Zay Flowers, you're you're kind of in that section. Even we saw it with Odell of getting two to four targets a game. Right. And you're absolutely correct on that, because I think back to last year when you mentioned Mark Andrews and the fact that that was taken away from Lamar. And so that allowed him to open up the field and go to Rashad Bateman more and Zay Flowers and have them really be that new security blanket that we always talk about Mark Andrews being. And also you have to think about that Isaiah likely is in that combination as well. So there's going to be so many opportunities for guys to get involved that again, does it feel like there's almost too many, but you can never have too many guys because you don't know what's going to happen. And so for Rashad, I think you're right. You do want to see him get on the upper side of hopefully maybe like six Uh, targets at least, uh, or hopefully six targets, six catches. I mean, that would be great for Rashad Bateman. And you want him in those deep plays because we've seen him do that before. And I know that he's fast and him going up against the secondary that the Ravens have is fantastic practice because we've seen this, the speed of Nate Wiggins and Marlon Humphrey getting back into things now, getting to a hundred percent, dropping some weight. I feel like we've been on weight watchers all season with this team. So (laughs) That's kind of gone into a couple of <laughs> different things. Yeah. Like Marlon and Lamar and, you know, we're asking Derek Henry what he's eating. It's it's kind of we're looking at everybody. So if they can all keep up their speed on defense and offense, that's a great opportunity for them to get in the reps now and then be like, OK, so Rashad Bateman could be. I don't know if he's the number one target when we start the season, because I still think that Zay Flowers is going to be high up there. And because Lamar Jackson loves the RPO, you know that Derrick Henry is going to get a lot of carries as well. And that's already anticipated. And with offensive coordinator Todd Munkin, we saw so many changes going into last season. We knew it was going to be like an overhaul of like, okay, things are changing. I think it's going to be the exact same thing this year because Derrick Henry is now there. So that may change a lot. Yeah, I think so too. And to your point, I 
the amount of times I've written or used the word body transformation over the course of this off season Ooh. might be more than I've used it over the course of the last three seasons. But it feels yeah. that way with everybody slimming down and feeling good and feeling like themselves. And this is always Valerie, like best shape of their life watch. Like yeah. any, it's always like the off season type deal. But I do think that it does say something, especially, I mean, the, the one that I was most encouraged with was Ronnie Stanley, just to go off on that tangent, because for him, we know it's been a tough road ever since that ankle injury. And I think for him just to be feeling good, yeah, that 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 is a key, key point. But to Bateman, Valerie, what are your personal expectations for him? Do you expect, so let's assume he stays healthy. Let's assume he's able to stay on the field. Do you believe that he can really turn a page here in his career? It seems like the extension, maybe the belief the Ravens have given him and everybody who talks about him says he's been looking great. Do you expect the belief to translate to the field this season? Or do you think that with so many mouths to feed, as you alluded to there, he could be looking still at more like a two, two to four target share? So I do think that two to four target carry range per game could be that sweet spot for him. But if they're getting into those deep passes with Rashad Bateman and Lamar Jackson, could he be a thousand yard wide receiver for 2024, 2025? That's the goal. And when I talked to Rashad Bateman in the middle of last season, he is a motivated guy. And I do feel like that he's been under the radar. He's always kind of been overshadowed by OBJ, by the new up and coming Zay Flowers. So maybe this is the year where he's the veteran wide receiver here. You know, he's the one that's been here the longest. He's the one that's now teaching Zay Flowers what's going on now that OBJ is gone. And he can step into that leader role in the wide receiver room and hopefully make a really big impact on this team because I think Lamar Jackson is finally ready for that too. I mean, he's the one that's been really speaking for Rashad and saying, this is the year we're going to make it happen for him. And so even if his carry rate is low or if his receive, receiving rate is low, if he's only getting a couple targets a game, I still think that's okay as long as he's involved just as much as the other wide receivers. Yeah, and your point there is great because I think, too, and we've heard both Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman talk about how they are excited to be taking on bigger leadership roles this season and kind of helping out some of these guys. But for Rashad Bateman, it is kind of giving pointers. He's been in the league longer than Zay. And even though, you know, everybody's like, okay, Zay's the wide receiver one, there are things that Rashad Bateman has seen during his three plus years that Zay didn't see during his rookie year. So that experience is very, very invaluable. Coming up though, in the second part of the show, the Ravens offensive line competition is another huge storyline and they are potentially sniffing around some other offensive line help still on the free agent market. We talk about who and what it could mean for the rest of the guys on the roster coming up next here on Locked on Ravens. First, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sports team like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. In this summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with the booster bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long in the MLB. Gunnar Henderson is in the MVP conversation. Obviously, Aaron Judge and Bobby Wood Jr. were probably one, two there. But if you want those odds, FanDuel has you covered. And for the Ravens and Chiefs, they open up week one just a month from yesterday. So if you want those odds, the Ravens opened up as two and a half point underdogs over on FanDuel. FanDuel has a cover for that as well. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel official sports betting partner in Major League Baseball. We are back. Our second segment, Locked on Ravens. Kevin Allshark is still here with Valerie Preactor of WBAL. And Valerie, I know the Ravens lost 60% of that offensive line. That is a big chunk to lose for a contending team, particularly, especially when it's guys like Kevin Zeitler, who was just such a steady guy on that line and outstanding human as well. Morgan Moses and, and John Simpson, who was kind of like the feel good story coming back and, and giving a role for them. But this seems to be like the year of the young guys on the offensive line with Andrew Voorhees kind of being in the front running front seat for that left guard job. Seems like Roger Rosengarten. He's not getting those first team opportunities. The right guard position, though, I think the one everybody is looking at. And on Monday, it was reported by Adam Schefter that Connor Williams, the former Dallas Cowboys second round pick and also Miami Dolphins offensive lineman, came in for a visit. He's reportedly deciding between the Ravens and the Seahawks. So Mike McDonald could uh, could strike again in terms of maybe taking somebody away from the Ravens. But Williams has he was he's a great pass blocker, finished, I believe, in the top five in pass blocking grades in both his years in Miami as a center. Started off as a guard, moved over to center. But the thing, Valerie, is he tore his ACL in week 14. So obviously the recovery there is the big question mark. But I do think if the recovery is good, his agent is kind of saying, yeah, he'll be able to play week one. So we'll, we'll see. 
what, what it ends up looking like. But do you think that Williams could be a valuable addition, especially considering Baltimore could probably use some more vets on the offensive line right now? Absolutely. There's no doubt. I think the number one thing that I was looking toward when you're looking at this offseason and who the Ravens could potentially be getting, I know they had, you know, obviously they were looking in the draft for an offensive line. That's what Eric DaCosta told us. And we knew they were going to hit on that with Roger Rosengarten. But that was really the position that I was looking for, the, the area of need 100%, because the offensive line dictates the entire game for Lamar Jackson. If there is not a strong offensive line, and he's had that every year that he's been in Baltimore. So for that to basically be just obliterated in the offseason and only Ronnie Stanley's coming back and Tyler Linderbaum, that was so scary to see that. And again, we're talking about a security blanket. The offensive line is one of Lamar's security blankets. So yeah. For you to bring in Roger Rosengarten, we know that um, you've got Patrick McCarry, who is an incredible unicorn, and I think people can really underestimate him, and he is always going to be in the conversation for being at some position in the offensive line on any given day. You never know. But also, Andrew Voorhees. And what a great draft pick that the Ravens had two years ago with him because he was one that came out of the combine. Everybody was looking at him. You know, the viral moment of him doing – um the I don't even know what that's called pull-ups or something uh yeah, I'm really bench, yeah the bench press going up yeah yes and so that's ungodly like I am so excited to see what Andrew Voorhees has and I know that he was rehabbing with Nick Moore and I had a great um extended sit down with Nick Moore who also coming back this year from injury they were obviously going through rehab together at the facility and Nick Moore said to me oh no this guy you better watch out for Andrew Ruiz. And so I am so stoked to see him on the offensive line. I think he, he's he got to be a shoe in for a spot on there. And I think that obviously Roger Rosengarten is as well. I'm excited to sit down with him this week and get to know more about what's been going on, how he's adapting to training camp, because it, it, it's tough. And you've got guys like Ronnie Stanley who – you know, is an all pro and is a veteran on this team and and can kind of bring them in, kind of take him under his wing. And um, and Tyler Linderbaum is also stepping into that veteran role now. I mean, what is this, year three for Tyler Linderbaum? So yeah. I, I'm so excited to see this offensive line really come together before we get to September 5th against the Chiefs because that is going to be the number one test. And you're going to see these guys potentially in preseason as well. So keep your eyes out. Yeah, and I know John Harbaugh said a couple of weeks ago, he's like, yeah, well, it's ideal if we can get all these starting spots uh, wrapped up by the time the preseason starts. And I'm like, oh, that'd be great. But I don't I don't know how realistic that is. And I know he kind of rescinded that and said, okay, yeah, I know it's probably going to take take some more time. But I do know that where he's, and I, I go back, Valerie, I think literally right after they made that pick, there were reports that came out that said the Ravens view this guy as a starter next season already yeah. because of how polished and how good he is. And so when he came out after tearing the ACL at the combine and did the bench press and did the reps and he, yeah. again, he's now the, you know, if you want to talk about a different aspect of this, even Madden has him as the second strongest player. The Ravens put that out too. So his strength, I mean, it is unbelievable. Yeah, there's no doubt. And that's why I think Ravens fans can be excited that, this offensive line is going to stand up to the standard of what it has been in years past. And you mentioned those two great guys in Kevin Zeitler and, um, and John, because gosh, when I talked to John throughout the season, I mean, when his wife gave birth, he had his first kid. I mean, this was, he was going through so many different things, you know, taking his own Southwest flight to a game in the middle of the season. I mean, it's just, he, he was crushing it. It was so awesome to see him. And, and again, first year with the team, and then he moves on to another, this is the business. It's what happens. But Kevin Zeitler was here for a while and obviously had a, a good family connection too with his wife here. And, and so now that they're growing their family and he, he's moved on as well. I mean, you know that p players that come out of the Ravens organization talk so highly about it and the culture and everything that goes on inside of the Under Armour Performance Center and everything that's going on from top to bottom. It's such a great organization to be a part of um, and to cover because they just are so good at everything they do. And so for Harbaugh to be like, all right, yeah, we're going to wait a little bit on the offensive line. That's fine. I think that's fine. Yeah, I, I do too. And I think that's just a natural progression of having so many young guys competing for so many spots as well. And I think that if they do bring in a guy like Connor Williams and, and just to make things clear about Williams, he's expected to sign pretty soon here. I think in the four, 48 hours, 72 hours, like he's expected to sign in that window. So if it's Baltimore, I think it's a great move because he gets to get depth at center, get depth at the garden. Baltimore loves that versatility. 
But I also think, Valerie, the right guard spot, because I think people, again, penciled in Voorhees at left guard. I think that's kind of where people are right now. Rosengarden, I think, is the assumed favorite. Nothing is set in stone yet, though, so there's still right. there's still competition to go. But that right guard spot, the way that the Ravens have kind of been rotating guys in and out have been pretty interesting. Tyler Linderbaum did not practice on Monday, and you had Ben Cleveland taking center snaps, and you have that versatility. Daniel Falele is getting reps at right guard. Do you think that Falele is ready? Do you think that if he can show enough, he's ready there? Or do you think that you would like to see a more veteran option, even if that is a Ben Cleveland or a Josh Jones? Well, I don't, don't discount Ben Cleveland. You know, that guy, big country, he could really be involved. <laughs> and I mean, we talk about it all the time on the morning show. I think he could, he could be a very viable option for the Ravens. Like you said, because he brings that veteran experience, he's seen the previous iterations of the offensive line and really knows what that means. Fall Lele is there. Obviously, he's been with the team now for a bit, and so he sees that too. But I just don't know if he has the right strength. And honestly, like, I don't know. When I watch Fall Lele play, it's just I don't feel as secure with him on the outside for some reason. I don't know. So if he is in – yeah, if he's in that guard position, it could be a potential, okay, that's fine, but – is he one that you're rotating in and out because it's not, he's not an every snap guy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but th you could say the same thing for Ben Cleveland because, again, they, they've been there, but they're not super experienced in playing an entire game at the offensive line position, which is so entirely hard. And yeah. so, I mean, I could see them trying to use a couple different options, and I think that's why Connor Williams could be a really great addition. Again, just to have that depth, you need – I mean, amazing depth at offensive line. And again, I go back to Patrick McCary because he can play every single position. And I, I don't believe that you've got Sam Mustafar. So like you said, that center yeah. position, just to have a backup just in case is so necessary. And so if they do pick up Williams, I think it's a great option. Yeah, I, I do too. And I, there have been plenty of conversations on, on social media, Valerie, after the Williams news broke about, well, why are the Ravens interested in Connor Williams? And I know some people said, well, oh, does this mean Tyler Linderbaum's injury is, is worse than expected? Or does this mean that the Ravens really aren't feeling the, the options at right guard? I agree with you, or I think – you can never have enough offensive line depth. We know injuries take a toll on every team throughout the season. Baltimore has been there with their offensive line. And for Williams, even if he's not ready to play week one, and again, Drew Rosenhaus' agent is adamant that he is. The recovery has been pretty exceptional if that's the case too because he injured it in December, week 14. But I still think that this would be more of a depth move. Maybe he can plug and play at the right guard position, but you're right. He's He was an incredible center for Miami these past two seasons. Again, the injury cut his season short, but he's an incredible pass blocker, brings a vet experience, and I do think Baltimore could stand to have some more vets on that offensive line. Coming up, though, in the final part of the show, we'll talk more about the whole team who has been standing out, who maybe you would like to see some more from as well. So stay tuned. we got a lot to get to on Lockdown Ravens. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. First, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And for me and a lot of other people, there are self-care non-negotiables. Maybe you never skip leg day or therapy day. When your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's hard for us to make time for it sometimes. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. And therapy has so many benefits, such as learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries for yourself. It can empower you to become the best version of yourself. And in just for those who experience major trauma, it's for everyone. If you're thinking of starting therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designing to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with licensed therapists and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off the first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. We return here with Locked On Ravens and with Valerie Preactor, I am Kevin Ostriker. And Valerie, I know that training camp just brings that excitement to the table at first, but I know once we start getting more into it and deeper into it, everybody's like, all right, where's the preseason? And then once the preseason, it's like, all right, where's the regular season? And we keep going on that train. The Ravens open up this week. It's crazy to think that we are already so close to some semblance, even if we might not see Lamar Jackson and Roquan Smith and everybody getting some semblance of football is great. Now, I know you've been out of the castle for a few days so far during the training camps. And for you, is there anybody that caught your eye over the course of your time out there? Is anybody that you really thought 
wow, this, this is a really impressive performance and they're making a name for themselves. When you talk about the secondary, Kevin, that's what I've really been focusing on other than the offensive line because of the addition of Nate Wiggins. And you see what the Ravens already had with Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Williams, and who's been standing out to me the most, Brandon Stevens. I mean, this is a guy who is so hungry and he is so ready to have his moment. And and I think that this is a great opportunity for him. And you got because he's he's kind of a um he's so versatile. I mean, you can have him at cornerback, you can have him at safety. He's he flies around. I mean, this is a guy who has a background in he's so fast. He's got a background in running back. I've talked to Brandon Stevens so many times and he is always, he's just a team player. And I think he's spoken, and again, this year, kind of similar to, to Rashad Bateman, like this is the year of Brandon Stevens because you're going to see him a lot more. And you also got Kyle Hamilton, and, yeah. and uh, who's coming off of an incredible season. And so you're like, okay, this secondary is one to keep an eye out for because of the incredible speed and they have so much experience. Because you're bringing in Nate Wiggins, to that group, uh, that core that I mentioned of all those guys, and Marlon being there the longest, but Marcus Williams also having a tenure. And again, Kyle Hamilton going into year three, he completely shattered all of the naysayers that were just beating down on him after year one, which wasn't the worst season that we've seen from a rookie. It just wasn't. So I think he proved all of those doubters wrong, and then he's ready for more. And Brandon Stevens is kind of on those same lines, even though he's a little bit uh, a little bit older and a little bit more seasoned. And so, again, the speed is there. I mean, he is just so quick. And he's a little bit, to me, you, you look at Nate Wiggins, again, Weight Watchers, he's so tiny. Yeah. He's just so thin. Mm -hmm. But I think Brandon Williams is a little bit broader in the fact that he can really take a guy down. Um, and so he can keep up with him and he can knock him down. And I think that's what you need from a guy in the secondary, especially – when the secondary for the Ravens has gone through so many injuries in the past. Oh, it has been, it has been brutal. I, I always go back to 2014 and that, that year where they were signing guys off the street. I think, I think they were signing me next. I think I was the next man up on their, uh, on their list. Cause they were running out of guys and it happens every year. And my, my thing, my saying Valerie is they start the year with 50 healthy corners and they end the year with two every single year. And it is just so exhausting. You can never have enough depth in that secondary. And I think it's why even the signings of an Eddie Jackson and Daryl Worley coming back, like those guys are so important. Eddie Jackson has been such an impressionable guy. I am again, so excited to see him in action. I don't think you're going to see him in the preseason, yeah. but again, a veteran guy, so excited to play for this team. And he has the cred. He's got the street cred. Okay. Trust in Eddie Jackson. I think he meshes so well with the rest of this team as well. And he's talked so highly about the secondary crew. And again, the coaches as well. Also, you're talking about the secondary under the new defensive coordinator, Zach Orr, who has obviously worked so closely with the inside linebackers and Roquan Smith. And I mean, it's going to be brilliant. Also, on that same line, who we're, who we're looking for? Um, yeah, Trenton Simpson because he is mm. right next to Roquan Smith. He's talked a lot during uh, training camp, and you know he's that kind of guy that you're thinking about. Mm -hmm, he's, got a, he's got big shoes to fill with Patrick Queen going to the Steelers. So I think he's up for the challenge. Again, this is going to be his kind of hopefully breakout year because he obviously didn't play much in his rookie season, and it, there's a lot of expectations on Trenton Simpson, but I think that the fans are, are really into it, and I think they're excited because – He's learning from the best linebacker that we've seen in a long time here in Baltimore in Roquan Smith. Yeah, there is that Roquan Smith elevates everybody on that defense. And, you know, I will say Patrick Queen was finding something in his third year at the beginning, but obviously Roquan came in and I think that, you know, just like he did everybody else, he certainly elevated Patrick Queen as well. Now, Valerie, I know the big uh, free agent addition for the Ravens was Derrick Henry. And I need to ask you in person, is Derrick Henry, is he just as advertised, this mountain of a man, especially I know the pads are on now, so it's even just like, all right, without pads, Derrick Henry's a huge human. With pads on, I'm sure it's just even like 10 times to a different level. And, and I can tell you this, Kevin, everybody asks me that, no matter who I'm talking to, <laughs> friends, family, coworkers, everybody's asking about what 
he looks like in person. And I can confirm Derrick Henry is an absolute monster of a, of a person. I mean, I, I'm 5'3", and God knows he is just towering over me. And he is just so bulked up. He's absolutely jacked. But he again, he's doing it right. He's taking care of his body. I've seen him in the press conferences. You see him on the field. I mean, him, I need this, I need the side by side of him next to like Zay Flowers, who honestly isn't the shortest guy either. Right. But like, it's father and son. And it's really there's there's no comparison there. Uh, but it's just incredible the the human being that he is as well, and, and learning about him as he's starting his Ravens journey, which is gonna be so awesome for him. I'm so excited. He spent, you know, so many years in, in Tennessee, you know, six years with the Titans at least. And being the best running back in the league comes with a lot of pressure on his back and he carries it so lightly that he is he knows he's capable of what he can do and he can be the best running back in the league with the Ravens and again could we see finally a running back actually leading rushing this year for the Ravens what? What? When have we seen that? Oh my God! I don't even know. Uh, maybe put Lamar Jackson on, on on the side for a second. That would be great. I, he needs the time. You're gonna see them both. There's no question about it. And again, that is gonna be so explosive that duo, because you know how much the Ravens' offense loves to run the ball. They, they do, and they should not move away from it. Now I'll do a little bit of a exposing myself. I'm five seven, and so for Derrick Henry. You know, for him, and I work with the Ryan Ripken show. So Ryan is 6'3", and Zach is 6'3", and Brad is 6'. I'm just like this 5'7 guy in that crew. Derek Hender would take that to a whole nother level in terms of like just making me look like this, just looking up at him. But I mean, look, it, it's beneficial to the Ravens because with what he is in that offense, and it's no disrespect to guys like Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, who were awesome when they were on the field during their time in Baltimore. But Henry just brings a different dynamic. He's again, from all accounts and reports, starting to really find his rhythm in training camp so far. So I think it's going to be a huge addition to them because a lot of people are asking, well, why would you sign Derrick Henry if you already had the top rushing offense? And to me, my answer is, well, just because it was the best doesn't mean it, it can't get better. And to that point too, Kevin, when you think about the Ravens really taking a chance, are they taking a chance with Derrick Henry? But really believing that he can mesh so well with this offense, like you're saying, uh, to me, that means they're serious. They are like, this is the year. We are all chips in. Derrick Henry's the guy. You know, they they got, they got did, they didn't, you know, deal anybody, but they let go of a lot of guys. They didn't sign in free agency. So yep. they did make a lot of sacrifices for Derrick Henry. I don't think they paid him an extremely, like, exorbitant amount of money I think it's well worth it when you're talking about a guy like Derrick Henry and what he can bring to a team and to a season with the health that's on his side and why he is the way that he uh the way he looks but but no I, I think that to me that shows that the Ravens truly believe that 2024 based on what they did last year they can build off of it and get even further which is the goal for everybody yeah, 100%. And I think, too, you know, based off of what guys like Saquon Barkley got from the Eagles and what Josh Jacobs yeah. got from the Packers, I mean, Derrick Henry was a two-year $16 million deal worth up to $10 million per season, two years 20. To me, I think that out of all three of those guys, Derrick Henry was the best value out of those. Yeah. Three. Because, again, is, is he 26 years old? No. He's hit that age of 30 for running backs, which is like, the oh, it's scary for everybody. But I think that for him – the way he was used in Tennessee and all the all the miles he had, it is exceptional to me, Valerie, to see him having low 300s amount of carries, high 200s, and to see him only really miss time in one of the last five seasons. It speaks to his durability, and hopefully that can continue in Baltimore. And we've seen what he's been able to do against us in the past, so it, it's yes. really a no-brainer. And to me, it's almost shocking that nobody else was really that interested in him and you mentioned his age. Obviously, you know, he's he's 30. So you're thinking about, okay, so when is he going to get to the wrong side of 30? But we've seen so much more longevity in this sport for guys who really take care of their bodies. Look at Tom yep. Brady. I know it's a different, a totally different position. Um, but, I mean, Derrick Henry is obviously a guy who wants to play for a long time and wants to set more records and, and win. And, again, the Ravens are saying, okay, so we can win now because we have Derrick Henry. And that's the goal. And, again, you mentioned it two years so it's not even just a rental that's not what we're talking about here so even if you get to potentially the Super Bowl uh this year but you don't 
win it. You still have him for another year and another shot at the Lombardi. Yeah, and, and that's the big thing here, too, where, again, for Eric DaCosta, it's it's managing not only for this present season that we're in, but the reason the Ravens have been so competitive is because they always are thinking two years, four years, six yep. years ahead, and that is where the longevity of that comes in 100%. Valerie, I know the Ravens have the preseason coming up on Friday. It's, again, exciting. Is there anybody in particular you're looking out for in that game, anyone that you, you think needs a big game or needs to make a name for themselves early? I mean, it's so early in preseason. I think it's crazy yeah. that we have the first week of August, we have a Ravens <laughs> preseason game. Um, but we're ready. We're back. And gosh, I mean, I always love looking at the rookies. Oh, here's a fun one. Maybe like Kadir Ismail. I have had my mm -hmm. eye on him a little bit. And again, you talk about the Ravens consistently signing an undrafted free agent rookie. Is he one of those guys? I mean, it, it's Again, we talk about wide receiver. You always need more guys. So again, I think that family aspect kind of goes along with it. Obviously, he's he's a homegrown guy, um, and so he's one that I hopefully am gonna we're gonna watch and we're gonna see preseason game one. If if he's out there, I definitely will be watching. Yeah, and I think for for a lot of people, the big thing for the offseason wide receiver wise was can they get a big bodied receiver to come in here and do something for them and Kadir yeah. certainly fits that bill being 6'6 six, six, so he's exactly what the doctor ordered there for Baltimore 100 percent but Valerie I appreciate your time thank you so much for hopping on talking Ravens with me please tell people where they can find you and, and what you're working on here oh yeah no doubt about it I appreciate you having me on this is awesome love talking the birds obviously my twitter is down there valerie underscore wbal my instagram is the same my facebook is the same uh but yeah every morning on wbal and 98 rock we cover the orioles and the ravens so of course you can hear all of the games on our stations awesome well the links to valerie's work all will be in the description down below so be sure to check her out she does great work covering both the ravens and the orioles again as, as we talked about before valerie it is the best when both teams are competitive at the same time, so we've had the Orioles taking us up the football season and hopefully a long postseason run for the birds coming in. Both, both birds, Ravens yes. and Orioles as well. But again, appreciate you, Valerie. Thank you, and thank you to everybody for tuning in today and listening or watching Locked on Ravens. Be sure to subscribe, follow along, video form and audio form. Tomorrow we have more Ravens content coming your way, so stay tuned. I'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.